So I've seen uh, <clears throat> Vladimir Zelensky in Dilemma with fighter jets, some of which are Swedish made sub Gripen and then American F-16, etc, etc, etc. And it's, <coughs> trust me, identical with all other issues. So I thought I would share with Zelensky case of my own, which I already have explained about, but I'm not sure whether Ukrainian side understood me or did not understood me. This is not only for Ukraine. This is for all the countries. Actually, I would say for NATO allies, members, non-members, those interested in doing business, if not members, something that is quite familiar among those older members in NATO. <coughs> I have experienced myself in my own skin. And I want to share with you a little knowledge about the inside of the NATO, <coughs> NATO alliance on what basically the best course for you would be to follow. Like, I'm just giving you like a, my in and out very fast about how it all operates in NATO for your sake. Because I believe that uh, in variety of... Uh, allies logically to me map wise number wise uh, it all adds up to more democracy inside uh, and the costs are re redistributed it's e it gets easy on everyone it's safer this way it assures somewhat democracy, I should say even existence, for a little, uh, little guys, for like a little countries. It's not a case here in Slovenia, and that's why it's something I want to share with you, so that you will understand basically when dealing in NATO with NATO, like let's say. I'm not sure how much Baltic states are aware of that. There's a whole pack of countries that got into the NATO and so on. It's a whole lot of countries in the world that are interested in cooperation with NATO. And I don't see any evil in NATO as long as NATO is organization that is dedicated to everybody equally, to everybody's security equally. I think a security is something that assures well-being of other people than of everybody because, you know, if everybody is safe, <clears throat> that's what matters the most. But the, the problem, you know what a problem is? The problem is, you, that's my five minutes to you, that <clears throat> very easily can happen within the NATO alliance that countries are even lost. If not before joining to NATO, such as was the case, let's say, with the Chechnya, with the Dagestan, I would say even Bosnia and Croatia in many ways, they lost the territories like this. Slovenia was almost lost, wasted entirely. They are still working on it. Then, <clears throat> once they join, you know what I'm saying? Once they join to NATO, 
and for some reason, some way, somehow, NATO finds a more convenient option, a better option, falls apart, and those can fall prey. Anything can fall apart. We have greater than Great Britain giving us example in absolutely everything in a worse sense possible and for the European Union and for the NATO and for absolutely everything. They're like a top, top shit partner. I wasn't going to say, but <clears throat> what do I have left other than to expose this whole thing? With a Britain is like this, like a, with a top. George Bush stated once, he said, he stated to David Cameron, British Prime Minister. No, I made a mistake. He was not a Cameron. He was uh, Tony Blair. Says Britain our top ally, a main ally, number one ally. It is, it is, and so special because of this, because when it comes to NATO, more than fifty percent, what it accounts for NATO is made in the United States of America. For one thing, that you should remember. <laughs> when it comes to other members, I'm just doing like this. Uh, that is the idea. The idea is to divide costs, to be efficient, uh, and also provide through solidarity those in need. Sometimes, however, this is taken in a different context. <coughs> and from the case of my own, I'm going to say to you, how much I paid for the NATO, the cost, out of my own pocket. I lost no less than 48 life, 48 years of life in the process. Because not only some members in NATO are more equal than others, but because I'm from a small country, I'm from Slovenia, it's not very essential to NATO, even that I deem every country in NATO <coughs> should be essential to NATO, and I deem also that partners that are not part of NATO are just as essential and important as the NATO members. A lot of people that does not agree with me, I know. It can be seen in Ukraine what it looks like. But here's what I gotta say from my own case on my own. I gave NATO more than what well, anybody possibly could give someone and have <laughs> so I didn't even know what NATO is when I was four years old, five years old when I was brought to Moscow and this stuff started but I fought a hard fight for the NATO's sake against the British Royals and a Soviet Union was defeated by my age 10 morally eaten from within because it was a child that would in that school in Moscow where I would be brought stand up to adults in the face how the hell I made it through the school The best would be to describe this like a super violent chaos.
when this uh, ordeal despite my being regarded repeatedly by British royals as mentally retarded ill as like the only people from the West that would really do stuff like this well there was some other diplomats that would do stuff too just um, it really hurt me when British got on me Especially it hurt me because it was Princess Anne, it was it was Queen Elizabeth that gets say you don't understand how women can be abusive and violent. This was my case. I will never forget Princess Anne. I had even less Queen Elizabeth, because Queen Elizabeth, according to Princess Anne, just wanted to choke me, really. But it was interesting because In 1981, at my age 10, Queen Elizabeth liked her or not, she never told me why, but it changed. Interesting maybe is that I'm the only person who would still hang around me when I was like 8 years old. This was for the Prince Charles, he, he wanted to choke me, he was doing whatever he could to destroy me, this people wanted to destroy me. Edward, Prince Edward is uh, the biggest weakling maybe in the, the whole family, the worst. <laughs> Next to Princess Anne, this was like a lady, I mean, this was not like a male, this was like, I mean, the way it turned against me for standing up literally as a child against this Soviet machinery, But at age 10, this movement of mine, this resistance, this rage against me did gain track. And it was people from within the Soviet Union republics that started to, not only people within the Soviet Union, but also countries from Europe that were occupied by the Soviet Union, they started to pick the signal. And probably this is like a watching TV when you see always the same show, the same shit. You see one kid, they break him. We talk about the kids. The Soviet Union literally used kids to prove to adults how they can handle us like a cow. And sure enough, if you can break the kid, obviously every one of these leaders and didn't even dare to think about you can do with adults. They start with the kids, they start with the children, but they couldn't break me down. And boy, it was tough. But eventually, when I was 10 years old, the signal within this uh, circle in Moscow, international circle, became so strong, the resistance signal from Eastern Europe against this centralization without, you know, leadership centralization in Moscow, Soviet centralization without real leadership, which is centralization based on violence, basically. That Americans would not let me completely fell apart. I mean, I was finished. I mean, they sucked me. It was a, on a peak of the violence when all of a sudden um, I get support from Americans and it was other diplomats that I get support from from around the Europe. From Europe. And um, the British naysayers had to give in too. Whether they like it or not, they had to believe in me. It was the first time I would actually meet Queen Elizabeth be nice to me, which is like so fucking strange. Because I was sure that the lady 
hates me just as she expressed herself more than she hates anybody in this world. Yeah, I mean, how you tell this as a queen of Britain to a six, a seven, eight, nine-year-old child? I don't even understand. But the situation was such that maybe I even did. Maybe I was even forced to fight Princess Anne physically. I don't know, as a child. Because they were violent, you don't understand. It's this chaotic, violent stuff that they would test everything possible in you to break you down. And they did pick the signal and they started to bombard send it through the cinema and through the music with with a lot of stuff that simply boosted like like military wise way before the Top Gun came out all of a sudden movies appeared from the battlegrounds where Americans were fighting uh, with the Soviets and so on and it, it boosted the morale, it made people watch, in one way, all this, with in, in one hand with another, it just started to build a really, really stronger, stronger and stronger and stronger current. And this current, a Queen Elizabeth would still meet me on the side only. Only when I would be in Britain, she would be different. She would not travel much evident to me, to to the Russia, to Moscow. She had Princess Anne for that. She had Prince Andrew and Charles and stuff. She she stayed back in uh, in Britain, and they would always report to her. Uh, it was like totally different person that all of a sudden I met, like at age nine, when they picked the signal that they are not going to break me down no matter what, and. I got in the face to Princess Anne, I was, man, uh, if I didn't hit her, uh, I know that I was ready to hit her at least, because this is the way it was. This is just the way it was. She was not a nice person, and I wasn't going to give in this shit anymore. They got respect for me, a tremendous respect from the beginning. As a child already, I gave them, like, exceptional reception, respect, they heavily abused that, they abused that for some time and then it became physical for my part, in the same fashion, the same way as toward the Soviets. And once I started to pound this British royal family, I didn't stop. They, they understood that it's better nothing to approach anymore, but these are the circumstances, the chaotic shit that went on inside of Moscow, violence, nothing but violence that just happened to have developed into. But like I said, it, like at age nine, all of a sudden I would meet Prince uh, Queen Elizabeth like in a private, you know. Anyhow, um, whatever followed up, it was just continuation of what I stated in a much lesser um, degree because I was growing and growing physically developing myself and uh, this this really was a game with uh, like like every year that I survived I didn't even understand in real life it was easier for me easier and easier and easier they got tougher through the grades in the school, but um, it was very, very tough, but uh, the burden over there, it, it was coming in off me. It wasn't, it was really bad, but mm, in a certain way, not anymore. They, they, um, they had a great, it, it was becoming more and more difficult for them to handle me. Um, anyhow, Slovenia, became a question 
at one point in time, a Republic of Yugoslavia of the greater Serbian Chetnik state, as I refer to Yugoslavia as, and I always will. Um, supposedly a socialist Republic of Yugoslavia, yeah, socialist Maya has, because it became evident with war declaration on four different nations that it was nothing other than ethnic cleansing that took place, genocide, uh, for the sake of the greater Serbian Lebanon realm. It didn't have nothing to do with any socialism, communism, or anything like this. This was just a mask. It was just uh, something that they have hidden themselves behind and afterwards even used to full potential at their advantage uh, in front of countries like China, Vietnam, and so on, like claiming like they did, like, like they are like, you know, communist, uh, socialist, and stuff like this. A crap. The question about, same as the Soviet Union applied, about Slovenia applied, about Slovenian independence, where I was from. A particularly crazy subject to which Russians, because of me, I suppose, did not even dare to oppose much because it was so. Uh, I was like. You get into my face through an MK Ultra about Slovenia, and I was a kid. You don't get away with the whole scheme, basically, just like this. I mean, you don't get away with it. That day I, I beat you with the smile of your face and humiliate you so badly that it's unbelievable. You'll be fucking dreaming about me ever since. Just for getting in my way during MK Ultra about Slovenia. Uh, they knew that this is probably not going to be able to hold on to it, but what's interesting is the ways they have negotiated the separation from Yugoslavia, the Slovenian separation from Yugoslavia, and it was from here in Slovenia, they, they, uh, the so-called independence leaders, which some were involved since my age seven, pressed down hard on me how they need the weaponry from the West. They would, but it is it's necessary the weaponry from the West, something that they, if we would be armed, only if we would be armed, and this and that. So I took that to Moscow with me. I remember, understood what he told me. And I started to beg over there for the weaponry for Slovenia. And got into a severe fight one time after another. I was finally told that there would be no there would be no weaponry for Slovenia <coughs> by American side even British <coughs> were quiet they had Americans explaining me in the face uh, that there would be no weaponry and it was Donald Trump that supposedly always sided with me uh, but always in, in, in the worst sense possible. This is a British agent that would use absolutely every opportunity to present the British view through the mouth of American uh, in what it appeared to me a very presentable way because he held like a tougher stance and some of those diplomats I would just more than fire because you know I, I wanted a militant over there to represent me because this is just the way it was I was isolated I was <clears throat> ridiculed, humiliated, and I had nobody really to stand up to this bullshit, and so the most presentable to me, it appeared somebody who was at least acting like 
you know, important and was stressing the issues like from like louder maybe uh, and directly he knew exactly what what I need what I want what I needed and um, it always appeared somehow that he was um, that he understood me basically I, I so, sort of started to prefer him even that that uh, other politicians diplomats warned me about this guy still the thing is that I didn't have a luxus I didn't have a luxury to uh, to play with I didn't have much choice is what I'm trying to say I didn't have people that you know that I would decide about I had to grab basically just like when you have to in war whatever comes your way and use it whatever is given to you whatever whatever comes your way basically and I was Donald Trump at the time who first really disappointed me because he said he repeated the same thing they won't give me weaponry and stuff you know they had the presidents they had the politicians and they decided there's no way that however that that's not going to happen and this and that um, unless I would accept help from British and because this shit happened in Moscow there is absolutely no doubt that the Russians knew about it so why the hell did this shit happen in Moscow this negotiation about SAR-80 um, Germans didn't say anything about Armbrust that was a secret that was a top secret but they demanded from me to acknowledge SAR-80 SAR-80 was just somewhat essential limited size at least what I think I think it was in Moscow I'm pretty sure okay I'm like eighty percent sure I give you twenty percent there is a chance for for my going wrong with it but eighty percent I cast into that it was actually in Moscow that it was in Moscow and it was maybe even in Britain I'm not sure on two places however Russians I know they did smell something about this stuff and the thing about it is that they wanted for me to acknowledge that it would be from the British so I was like well another individual who was present to this was a Thailand king Thai king Bumibol Bumibol he demanded from me they repeated to me this stuff to a knowledge that this is like like a royal club like that you understand basically that they are not going to give you and they made sure for American side to reiterate me this to, to repeat me for me to acknowledge this that this is just not from American side or anybody else that this is this is going to be exclusively for me that they wouldn't want to do however it's going to be from the British that British that will help in somebody else and it was really done in a such a way that you couldn't point this in British you couldn't even point this into Thailand and they got it done through British made uh, this was a 
a copy of the of the British made rifle. Uh, I I don't know what it is, some British made rifle. It really doesn't matter. It's a it's a it was a replica. It was a copy with certain improvement made by the Singapore government. Told me because it's lighter and because people are smaller, so it's got to be lighter and just as efficient. Just a little modifications in a way better and to me really I didn't think about it I was like more than I was really satisfied I mean it's gonna be when we landed back to Slovenia it was Boucher who stated to me that the Germans also gave them another package and that's gonna be arm bruised. and so that's gonna be like quite considerable uh, basically a green light basically for Slovenian independence that's how this stuff went it brought me back to Slovenia this the independence politicians reported to me that uh, the German side also agreed that it's going to be arm bruised arm bruised is anti-tank equipment it's very efficient it's it was deciding uh, equipment in this matter the uh, Boucher, Jansch, all these people were still very hesitant about it, but when Germans threw on a table arm bruised, they confirmed. In fact, the Boucher claimed me that they were still not going to do it. Basically, they kind of blackmailed them to get this weaponry. Alright, so, guess what? They got the weaponry. But when Slovenian independence happened, <coughs> my case, my ordeal did not end. Know this. I became a hostage of this royal deal. In other words, royals, in short, that I would become like their slave. And upon Slovenian independence, the case would simply transfer into a new period, carrying on from what used to be Yugoslavia through Slovenia without absolutely any difference, any exemptions, this crime will just continue against me. And so now I find myself in a country where everybody is celebrating this shit. I'm thinking about how the fuck to get out of here to save my bare skin. I am video recording this stuff so that you understand what your job is within NATO. Uh, how to pursue your rights in whichever part of the world you are, whether you're in Asia or you're in Africa or you're in South America or North Pole, wherever you are, this is what I'm doing for, or Europe, so that you understand how to properly pursue your um, relationship so that you don't become a hostage like I became of your quasi I should say imaginary freedom. With a freedom that came, I was thinking about life in Austria, and very soon uh, escaping to the United States of America, which I really did in '95 at age 23. I, I figured out that what I did not succeed in Austria is going to happen to me. In the United States, if I go only 5,000 miles away from here, I figure out I'll probably be safe from this. <sighs> Same shit as it was during Yugoslavian, during the Serbian occupation here in Slovenia. I figure out that over the course of the time, since Slovenia would become also a NATO and European Union member, these people from the past, whether they liked it or not, would have to disappear. Uh, the whole picture would clean itself. And if the worst would come to worse, if I wouldn't have somehow ability to stay in the United States of America, I would come back, whatever. The thing is that these independence leaders I won't waste my time with it, but 
this was, there, were, there were no difference that uh, uh, eventually through this crime they became they partnered they became a partners of their old enemies have to add to this that Yanis Yansha used to be part of the leadership of this old movement pro-Serbian movement Udba so was Igor Baucher Dmitry Rupert was indifferent this was a spy and I don't know much about Loise Petrle but his actions were like insane in respect to this this whole thing when it comes to Joze Puchnik he took his uh, frustration and all kinds of issues against me as much as he possibly could he's got basically every traitor would I frankly tell you that I'm keen to believe that these people were a substitution for what otherwise truly would be people that would run a real freedom movement in Slovenia. They were, in my opinion, in my views, based on proofs I got, based on what I observed from these people, uh, nothing other than I don't. I don't even like to say control the position because I think that they were worse than uh, in a sense of Yugoslavia return to Yugoslavia than, uh, than their predecessors the thing is that um, they were extremely successful at this because British assisted them in absolutely every way possible. I should say they assisted British. So now you had the old, what became pro-Putin movement, like Kuchan, Pahor, Dernoshek, Turk, Fayon, and so on. Yeah, that was for the Putin. And openly for the Milosevic, for the USSR, uh, Vucic, Karadzic, all this. And you had this newly established uh, Slovenian pro Slovenian independence movement, which was uh, which became um, a tool against me, definitely in the hands of uh, British. They uh, they marched against me with everything they had. And we're doing exactly the same things as to what I would and I did got from those whom I have fought against to to get uh, to secure independence here in Slovenia. So the difference became nude. There, there was no difference. So these are maybe already very very important issues for you. You should take a note that when you're choosing your supplier when you're choosing your whoever is gonna be and it's always is the biggest issue in the United States of America is gonna say to you something like this judge you should take extreme precaution uh, because British have a tendency to earn through your struggle uh, in in a such a way that they might eventually turn your independence, your um, sovereignty into hostility against you. Since you don't become hostage of your own liberation or, uh, you know, God forbid that, that, that you lose your country that, that you already have because of some kind of... Uh, assistance, military assistance, support. Um, choose wisely. 
with British when they sit at a negotiation table you can be within the second second to none you can easily your sovereignty can easily be sold to your enemy exactly to the one that they offered you assistance against if the terms are right if your enemy meets the expectations of the British if it's if got what it takes yeah, that's right you're gonna be sold like a banana on a market and the only thing that's gonna happen is your enemy is gonna get a superior weaponry as to the country uh, your country uh, will become a subject to a counter uh, intelligence that's gonna be not even run only through the British but British are really really good at camouflaging uh, when they're making their work orders uh, when they're doing some dirty stuff it never comes straight from the source it never comes from them unless they agree already well ahead like in the case of Ukraine like you have this storm shadow this stuff was negotiated during MK Ultra with the Russian side. So if the opposite side gives a check mark that it was discussed so much and so much and so on, then it would be like this. So they present their case like assistance or whatever uh, in front of the world, given the ability to um, remove any kind of suspicion from the other NATO members, from the world, from the, from the, uh, you know, from the public view about their legitimacy, about their sincerity, honesty in, in taking sides in particular conflict. This is basically this is exactly the way. This is just the way it is. You know, British moved out, uh, European Union, just nicely ahead of this conflict. Uh, started their own stuff. Uh, and so it's like either you take it or you know you just bid it forget about it it's a British way and that's why I am recording this so that you understand that stuff I have spoken about right now within the NATO club itself does not apply only to British uh, you're gonna have British trading sides with another NATO member party because of a special relation they might have with whatever concerns to this third party let's say like in Ukraine let's say so that if they have agreement with a certain party within the European Union somebody they they would step back and they would let that party handle the stuff you understand what I'm saying like becoming like a main supporter main supplier and France and Spain and Italy and Portugal should listen what I'm saying right now hear me what the fuck I'm saying so that you don't lag behind this stuff because it's what it counts right now the most Ukraine needs you is what I'm trying to say Europe needs you so they advance their politic contrary to the main supplier that would supply like in this case let's say Ukraine in the future when hostility ends instead straight with the Russia you get me what I'm saying and now you get to control both sides 
when you're making a decisions about what kind of equipment you want uh, try to get equipment if I was to address Zelensky right now Ukraine through the main supplier through the main uh, source whom everybody gets its supply like for example there was a Canadian American project once it was they worked on a project known as a CF 105 arrow well Canada that's British basically this project as soon as it was completed um, had fallen apart it was game over why was it game over because almost simultaneously to completion of 105 arrow uh, MiG-25 came to life and MiG-25 was a copy of you know a copy of this Canadian fighter jet how many have they even made they made five pieces of this CF 105 arrow fighter jet do you know what happened the United States of America which mostly have financed this project said well that's it for us we can't afford this anymore it's too expensive for Americans this project made no fucking sense they packed the stuff they turned around and they returned to Vegas they went right back to the US across the Canadian border and they would never return back Russians however did got their so-called MiG-25 Canadians abandoned the project realizing that uh, it makes little sense to make plane with same features as to what their Russian competitor has the reason for departure from Canada was here there was no fucking KGB remember what I was telling you about the Moscow about all that stuff that went on inside of the Moscow who was visiting Moscow you don't have to worry about no fucking KGB when you have these people more often in Moscow than uh, maybe even at home they spend too much time in Moscow don't like to tell don't like to admit but they competed with one another as per who would get the blueprints to Moscow first who would get to take them who would get the tanks from the Soviet Union this is the reality about British royals that you need all need to be aware I can tell you exactly what the situation is today British are turncoats they change sides they always favor the current whichever way the wind blows basically they see that the current is good that it's indicating that it would be extremely impossible actually for something to be lost and if the profits are high if the stake is good they just go for it but this is the worst of the worst NATO member in the history of the NATO this is the worst it doesn't get any worse than this so it's this NATO member no longer even European Union member that you need to be aware of there are countries who don't even deal with this NATO member and became hostage because of this NATO member 
If you know what I stated here, if you understand the meaning of my words, life is going to be easier on you already. My bet is the best partner NATO member, the one uh, that contributes more than 50%, that's got a lot of spare parts for whatever you're going to need, is this one here. I'm not particularly a fan of. Um, because of certain issues I already have spoken about. But when you're thinking about your national defense, there is, and that's why I actioned it a little earlier, France, Spain, Italy. There is Sweden inside. There is Norway inside. It's now Finland that is inside. Of these three, I would still rather eye on Sweden as to properties of uh, Patriarch Kirill, who purchased uh, properties throughout the Norway with my presence within my presence next to King Harald his son Hakon I witnessed that stuff I was there so knowing these countries that played a crucial role definitely is crucial to your uh, stability uh, having the ability to exercise not only support for your uh, whether that be fighter jets or, or guns or wherever you might be to purchase when it comes to spear parts uh, logistic uh, more important than this stuff is the continuation of the support that means that when you open the doors to these people uh, it might be not as lucrative as investments in a British pounds, let's say, or Norwegian crowns, uh, but the possibility has in it that it's going to take you further. After all, there is uh, poor people in Norway, trust me. It's all kinds of stuff that happened there. It's extremely a lot of poor people in England and uh, stability overall the continuous uh, support for your needs especially in during the hard times do play a crucial role in survival and when you combine um, I would not exclude a Turkey as an important member of this union is extremely important member of this union you will realize that uh, playing safe security go hand in hand with one another that eventually it will pay you off on a long term rather than jumping for something that could have uh, all kinds of implication and extra costs added to uh, your uh, sovereignty. Sovereignty, after all, this is nothing to play with. The world is very unstable, is changing, the political platform or corruption is handling the international uh, economy. And so to, you know, Play safe is, I would say, like a number one thing. Know your player. Know where you can use, where you can profit. And always how far you can let one go. This is all kinds of uh, issues that go on inside of this uh, European Union, uh, NATO. But I like the American approach that is 
favoring idea about certain certain countries must supply in certain issues uh, in a conflict of so basically engaging all the members into it yeah I like this idea but still you know there are some that like to uh, cut corners in many ways and you know don't become hostage of your freedom that's all the hell I'm saying uh, try to do your best try to choose uh, you know grow your strength through stability through the real partnership um, I was always a supporter of British uh, it was said that British earned through me more than even United States that the earnings the trade through the oil through the oil gas minerals I should say minerals and oil were just astonishing I was cursed by Americans for this for relentless support for the British even that it was something else that they cooked um, and I feel therefore that that uh, that I have to warn you about this that you need beware that um, British partners this is something to be aware of this is when you have to keep your eyes open wide open all the time about their deals they come with extra costs uh, they have tendency to 10 time amount value of something uh, to a conflict and present this statistic statistics uh, tendency to own party need through like you know I would say like it's just extremely extremely expensive uh, partner partnership British partnership is extremely extremely so fucking expensive that everybody uh, it appears I don't understand what Americans are talking about developing a new fighter jet again a tempest like also with Italians like I don't know it seems like it fit them but you know think about what happened with this fighter jet here it's okay with me because I know that you know how things and, and this and that but you know I'm just saying that like why the fuck would you give partnership to the British in respect to the fighter jet when you build one you create one uh, and you give them your share like why, why would you want to do that for I mean because I mean within the Britain there are different institutions to which Prince Harry always referred to his circle royal circle as an independent institution so when it, when it comes to the issues like this uh, for me personally if I was a NATO member like a serious country that, that would be engaging in this kind of operations uh, I would like demand from the British to totally separate royals from defense industry like totally 100% and make sure that you keep them on eye 
like 24-7 all the time. Literally when they go eat and shit. Not as a paparazzi, but that you have these people. These are spies. These are a Russian spies inside of United Kingdom, in Canada, and also in Australia. And people are afraid of them. Nobody is more afraid of them than the people from defense industry. I'm going to stress this to you. They have a tendency to trade public taxpayers' money spent on defense industry for diamonds and oil. Minerals, I should say. They have done it. And whether you be a foreign partner, you need to be aware of this. There is a good reason I am not going to say which parties, whatever, that that, that uh, they keep strictly to themselves, that they would not even get into the partnerships and stuff like this to serve with the certain projects. Okay. Um, British banks... are one of the best business wise advertisers out there and uh, it's extremely easy to get on with it they do get you on board they do offer you, they give you special threat mass, they give you more than what others do, uh, but they're known to become close to impossible to read itself. They have a tendency to take control completely over the entire system because of exactly issues I have said to you earlier. I remember when I told you that American side insisted that I how I have to remember that it's the assistant is from whom the assistance is and they actually are royals and stuff. Well it can easily happen to you that the loans get out of hand by other partners, other members declining to provide and offer special services to your main supplier which God forbid becomes greater than Great Britain. British people do not resent me this talk because I have proven to be more British than the British Royals. British involved in MK Ultra case who observed me and have compared me to a British Royals got to hate British Royals based on what they observed between me and British Royals. Patriotism wise. British Royals or continuously this I con I continuously embarrass them by demonstrating to the British what they really deserve how they really deserve in front of the world to be seen as, as a nation as a people now what a British did I consider as a insult and I will retaliate. I did retaliate, but I will retaliate to the full potential. For the full potential I retaliate in a case like this is by basically doing some awful stuff, if you like, awful, embarrassing stuff. Uh, it would use you like a punch bag. Like you go into the boxing gym, like entire nation, like a punch bag to beat the shit out of it and collect whatever is mine 
without even asking you. Because, why? Because, well, because... Well, because, you know why? Because I'm not ass. Because I don't... I don't go into anybody's ass to get things done. Because I know what my share is. In other words, I know about something right and about something wrong, where I have the right to do this. Was it injustice from my perspective, from my point of view? Was it something that could have been done different? Yes, it's exactly why. Not because I would want to give somebody a lesson, not because I would want to tutor somebody, not because I would want to be a smart ass, not because I can, not even because I can, but because I feel betrayed. I, I feel uh, there is nothing worse than uh, to sell somebody that is totally devoted to you. So I probably is like more like a lesson wise, like a terrible lesson wise. Just wait and you will see what will happen. Uh, that I feel that I have to do this, not because I would have the right, but that is necessary to do this. It's something like this, it's necessary. You know, a bullies, sometimes you have to do what you have to do for the bullies to understand this arrogance. Uh, I don't recognize this. I don't recognize any kind of arrogance over me. I don't recognize, uh, uh, you know, the methods that British royals have used against me. They incited against British, uh, literally making fun out of betrayal, out of total betrayal. Yeah, they really anticipated in my, with their apparatchiks, in my turning against entire Britain, uh, what would actually yell them as they refer to as even more success and such, you know, really sadistic, sarcastic, and so on. And uh, in a way, I took this as a challenge. Uh, somebody challenging a human dignity to the bitter end with the idea to destroy individual through toxicity of abuse yeah, and uh, issues such as betrayal, like sadistic. So that's all I wanted to say to you, that when dealing with this kind of issues, this actually is very bad for the British right now, because Britain is very limited. Uh, Prince Charles has presented <laughs> Prince Charlie, actually King Charles. Aha, it was a New Zealand signed a trillion. Yeah, you see that stuff. He was also involved in in MKO tra the twelve trillion Indo-Pacific trade. It's like giving like a enormous giant 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 promise uh, the thing about I have to warn you in advance is that Charles can't even wait to get back into the European Union really because he's just trying to present the issue like how lucrative it is he's, you know the time is coming when Britain is gonna have to climb back somehow into the European Union I think one way or the other and doesn't want to look completely broke. I think this is actually awesome, you know. If it was for me, I would even have Britain like this inside the European Union. I would rather to see British doing extremely well and present throughout the con continent 
you know, dealing with everybody because I like British people. But, you know, when you are a, such a dick and when you want war, <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. You're going to get one. I'm going to make sure that you get your share of shit you did in this case. So that's all I would advise you about how this is, how, how, huh, how this c'est la vie, you know, in, inside of the NATO is. Uh, some are more equal than others, and it's not only NATO, it, it also rules the, the, the economic world, it rules many aspects. Uh, it is, all these aspects are coordinated with one another. Uh, British is the worst partner for your individualism, for your necessity of individual support, uh, full sovereignty. If you are a country that you have opponent that is a dangerous opponent and uh, has a lot to offer to your uh, think about it like this even partners your allies like even nato allies be wary of english so you you must make sure you 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 must you you have to make sure that you evaluate from every aspect including from your enemy's point of view within concerning nato with whom could they possibly partner the most to profit from you. Uh, like I said, it's not necessary always, uh, you know, British and so on. Uh, with Donald Trump, we have seen that United States of America as a NATO partner <laughs> can be just as dangerous. Uh, there is dangerous people inside of this e economic and uh, military alliances. But, you know, so this is why, that that's why I said that this is a great I think alliance, uh, you know, alliance to me is great when there is like a lot of small nations. It's like the purpose of United Nations itself is basically to, to have as many nations as possible because, you know, it, it adds extra to uh, security of everybody. That's basically a safer world is a world for prosperity. So thanks for watching this video. I hope I did opened your eyes a little bit so you don't become a hostage of you know a politic that uh, could actually turn your entire country around and uh, land you somewhere without absolutely anything and uh, British are really, really good at bringing options that are dead already. Like in Slovenia, that there were options already that were completely destroyed upon independence that 100% had no future whatsoever. And when I observed what I, I couldn't believe, you know, just persistent British involvement pushing forward exactly the option that Slovenian independence have just rejected for its sake upon separation from this Federative Republic of Yugoslavia, I couldn't believe my own eyes when I saw that stuff. When I saw, when I realized that the options that were already long gone, that basically were gone for sure, that we're going to succeed with this stuff. And when I saw this climbing, assembling itself back before my eyes and uh, literally, you know, who cares about the politicians, but when you see literally national territorial defense dismissed, when you see basically a politicians, not politicians, but people involved in resistance, people that would, that would, that, like just say police officers and, and soldiers that just yesterday were confronting this uh, Serbian aggression and stuff, 
uh, were even going inside of this military facilities to secure uh, them with including the weaponry and such all of a sudden in this newly independent country uh, associating with one another and even apologizing them for taking steps towards Slovenian independence my god that's fucking scary when you see stuff like this this is the stuff I have seen upon Slovenian independence I've seen literally the Chetniks the Serbs whom we collectively have fought against in 91 in 90 literally returning back to Slovenia to literally inspect the military facilities meeting with the people who defeated them soldiers police wise and apologizing them right in front of me delivered from United States of America hijacked by Central Intelligence Agency CIA watching this British Royals making deals with a Serbian side on what exactly will be you know ruled out on the Balkans is for what part the Serbs are going to get entitled new part and so on where they're going to do exodus mass exodus of people and and even genocide and stuff like this. you don't want that shit like this this is this is this you know you must carefully evaluate that stuff and before you even evaluate if it's something that is just uh, you know because I know that that uh, it's it's a collateral I'm not going to say blame but it's a collateral involvement that NATO takes in consideration and try to make sure that whatever you get uh, you know from the British side did you thoroughly evaluate? Did you thoroughly compare? Did you thoroughly... By the way, the storm shadow missiles were given to the greater than Great Britain by United States of America. There's no fucking component of yours over there. This is the same thing, identical to Indian fighter jets, which United States of America engineers have designed, gave General Motors engines and stuff like this totally totally United States USA made the whole thing produced in Britain and so on so when you know when you go into the stuff like this it's very very important that you evaluate every aspect and when they give you something that anything you get into and you sign with them whatever that you properly evaluate and you select price range for whatever you have agreed you're going to receive the assistance and you better make sure about you know wh what what exactly is it what exactly is do they have that it's that somebody else doesn't have and what is the most uh vulnerability of whatever they offer you now what would you actually lose in comparison with with some other native state that that has to offer and so on and so forth that's all i'm saying i mean there's a lot of factors to this but these are certain issues just few issues to consider the freedom, the independence can come with extremely high costs and in fact, just as in my case, might never even come. After 48 years of MK Ultra, I'm still fighting to be alive. I just want to close something that started 48 years ago in so-called Yugoslavia. Slovenia is independent already since 91. So this is one, one horror story about Britain actually more than anybody else.